from Reverend Mel's desk. Replacement theology. The definition of replacement theology is supersessionism, also called replacement theology or fulfillment theology. It is a Christian doctrine which asserts that the new covenant through Jesus Christ supersedes the old covenant which was made exclusively with the Jewish people. Replacement theology is the teaching that the Christian church has replaced national Israel regarding the plan, purpose, and promises of God. So in replacement theology, the church has replaced Israel as the primary means by which the world is blessed by God's work. With all this in mind, we have replaced the Holy Spirit with an unsound doctrine that comes from an anti-biblical Christ teaching. For those who have ears to hear and eyes to see, the Western World Church has saturated themselves in this replacement theology in accepting that which is pleasing to themselves and their flesh. Martin Luther fell for this and inspired Hitler to fall for this, making him believe he was doing God a service by getting rid of the Jews. God had never forsaken the Jewish people and because the covenant of the Mosaic laws were fulfilled in requiring blood to atone and forgive sin, has been completed and fulfilled as Jesus himself said when he died and bled for our sins and three days later rose from the dead and abandoned the grave. God still loves and favors his people, the Jews. The Christians were grafted in, and they do seem to forget this fact. Jesus will come back for the Jews and will return as the King of the Jews, their Messiah, and the Gentile Savior and King. Queer or Peculiar Definition of Queer Strange, Odd, or Peculiar sometimes disparagingly plus offensive. A queer person, such as a person who is gay, lesbian, bisexual, pansexual, or otherwise not heterosexual. He fixed her hair and he did her makeup and showed her how to dress. And when he was done, she was so beautiful that he fell in love with her, even though he was a queer. I don't understand why the LGBT community does not prefer being called queer, especially when most Americans find it peculiar and odd to have a same-sex partner. For the Christians, we find it disgusting and offensive to even think about people of the same sex having an oral or any other sexual activity between themselves. We find this quite offensive also because it goes against our biblical values. This happens to be a really queer position that you put us Christians in by your immoral activities and values. Gay once meant joyous and happiness. Now it means a homosexual man. By this, the LGBT community has even taken the word from our vocabulary that no longer is used in having a happy, joyful, or gay time at the amusement park with my kids. Once again, the LGBT community has put the heterosexual in a queer position. The LGBT community has totally challenged in a frontal attack against Christian values and principles. Anyone that knows the Word of God should understand that this lifestyle is an abomination to God. You were created in God's image, therefore it is not necessary to legislate new laws to protect this unclean lifestyle. However, if you find yourself in this lifestyle, you can turn to Christ and become a new creature. The laws of the land will protect you. Now on Ilhan Omar. 
to apostate Christians who are rushing to follow the world, running from God's word, the Holy Bible, and are giving free pass authority to people such as Ilhan Omar in the name of non-discrimination, simply because she is a Muslim. You are hypocrites. What do you think she does 24 hours of her day? She viciously discriminates against Jews and Christians. Why is she excused? Because she is Muslim? Well, that is prejudice, too. Ilhan Omar's ranting and raging against Western Christianity, slandering Israel and the Jews, her sole purpose is to destroy the Western world way of life. She is here to tear America's principles and values by abolishing Christianity. If anyone else spoke out against Islam and Muslims the way she does against Judaism and Christianity, there would be such an outrage that you would hear about it for months and years on end, followed up by impeachment in court cases and jail time. We are watching the last day's prophecy being fulfilled by seeing the Church of Laodicea in the Church of America. Now, my remarks on the Democratic debate by Reverend Mel Jolly. It was very obvious that not one candidate spoke up about restoring the Constitution and Bill of Rights. In fact, every one of the candidates spoke very clear about taking our rights away from us by undermining the Constitution and Bill of Rights. One candidate on Thursday night had the audacity to blame not only President Trump, but the Christians for fighting against their immorality and socialist programs. Concerning the father and daughter who drowned in the Rio Grande, this would have been preventable if they had decided to come to America legally. The same for those that are in overcrowded detainment centers and camps. The conditions are so terrible, but this would be prevented if they came to America legally. There is always a price to pay when you break God's law as well as the law of the land. There will always be those who will want to destroy America and kick the can down the road. Keep jacking your jaws and be sure not to do anything. I am finding it very difficult to deal with apostate Christians or those that call themselves Christians. A true Christian would know that Jesus Christ himself was one of the most political people of his time. For those people who call themselves Christians and deny that the Bible is not political, you are on the fast track to destruction. Foolish thinking to say politics does not belong in the church or the pulpit. If you are amongst those who believe you truly are a Christian, and you refuse to talk about politics, you are a blatant liar and know nothing about God's principles and law because you are sitting on the fence and Satan is the one who owns the fence. You could die while sitting on the fence. This is why you see less and less of me on Facebook anymore. Consider this a severe warning to those that are half asleep. America, the enemy, and the terrorists are amongst us and in the capital. If we do not take this fact seriously, we will lose our Western way of life in our next election. America, you are outnumbered in the House and Congress by evil people who claim to be true Americans. They are satanic evil liars. Their sole purpose is to destroy the Western civilization as well as the biblical principles and values. They have the national and international media on their side. We must destroy the enemy before we have lost our salvation and principles. I am not calling for violence. 
but I am calling for the total removal of those that support anti-America principles and values, as well as those who are ignorant of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The Democratic Socialist liber Liberals, along with Google and Facebook, are working with China for a one-world currency. The same evil people are willing to kick the can down the road to allow the flood of, eagle, of the illegal aliens into our country to sacrifice our country and way of life. As an individual, I am sure we can think of ways to stop this or drastically slow it down. Thank you for listening. This is Reverend Mel's desk.